the way to win, to really get what you want is to help the other person get what they want first. And or, or at, least, at least at least involve them in a process. I mean, they don't even have to get what they want as long as they're fully involved. Yeah. I mean, there's that now they're in. Now they're part of the team. Now now that now they're good. So many people, if they just feel like they were fully involved with the process, they can live with whatever the outcome is. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that. <laughs> You know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going. Right, I'm Chris Voss, author of Never Split the Difference, negotiating as if your life depended on it. And you're watching Behind a Brand with Brian Elliott. What are people getting wrong? What are some of these classic mistakes besides burning bridges? And then how do we fix it? Yeah, well, and, and people don't realize how they're really burning bridges. Like if uh, Ronald Reagan had a great phrase, if you're explaining, you're losing. If you're in a negotiation where you're making an argument, you're making a point, you're making a pitch, you are slowly losing your counterpart. Yet so much business advice is, you know, you know, what's your value proposition? You know, what's your elevator speech? It's all about your communication, communication at people. Um, when in fact, they got the same thing going. Let them go first. Right. You know, uh, one of the subtle phrases about negotiation that I love, it's, Negotiation is the art of letting the other side have your way. <laughs> well, how do you do that? You got to let them talk. You know, yes. you got to get them, you know, let them go first. There's going to be stuff they're going to say that you're going to love. Now, where's your ego? Do you want it to be your idea? Do you want it to be their idea? If you want it to happen, it ought to be their idea because then they're going to love it. So letting the other side go first seems to be really counterintuitive with all the business advice of, you know, make your value proposition, make your elevator speech. This is it. It's the Shark Tank set right here. These tables, these chairs, right here, baby. This is where it happens. We come down that corridor. It's got to take a lot of guts to walk through that thing. And the doors are closed, knowing what's on the other side. Doors are closed, they're freaking out for sure. They don't know what's on the other side because they've always been practicing without the sharks there. Then they make the walk. Dun, 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 dun. The doors open up. And you could get an idea of how tough that must be. We we'll stand right here. And then, then it gets really tough. I mean, yeah. I've been watching it for 10 years, but I know it's hard. But, you know, it's going to happen in about 20 minutes. It'll start all over again. I love this show. It's so much fun to make because every deal's different. And after all, you only need one good idea. It changes your life forever. Um, okay. all right. That's great. Yeah. 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 I love that. 
I talk about mirroring too. That's a technique that you teach. Yeah, mirroring is phenomenal. Mirroring is repeating the last one to three ish words of what somebody says. You know, then once you got your repetitions in, you know, you've done it. You know, sixty three to sixty seven practice times, three four a day. That's why everybody says it takes three weeks to come up to build, bake in a, a, a habit. You know, it's your repetitions. It's going to take you about three weeks to get in 63 to 67 reps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you then, then you move your mirrors from the last one to three words to selected one to three words. The mirrors become surgical. The funny thing about mirrors is that, and it's interesting that you would ask me about that, because I have a theory um, that mirrors are the preferred negotiation technique of people that are both simultaneously high IQ and high EQ. Now, I am not a high IQ guy. You know, I mean, my IQ might be somewhat more than my age. You know, not a lot past that. <laughs> but when I see people who are really interested in mirrors, I think the simplicity appeals to them uh, because they like to focus as much of their brain as possible on the feedback from the other side. And mirroring requires the least amount of circuitry on your side. But mm -hmm. over and over again, the people that, that are just enamored with mirrors always have simultaneous high IQ and EQ. And it just, it's, a, it's a really surgical way to steer a conversation. I like it. It sort of reminds me of something that author Stephen Covey used to talk about, you know, this idea of seeking to understand before you're understood. And it really is, I mean, it helps in... I mean, if you're married like me, it helps. Like, so what you're saying is you'd rather me do the dishes before I go out with the boys and play basketball. <laughs> is that what you're saying? You know, it's like making sure that I understand uh, what the expectations are or what's valuable to that person. Getting clarity is super important, isn't it? Yeah, and I would, you know, I would kick Covey's saying up a notch or two with how you just embodied it because – a lot of people think think first to understand, then be understood, and they'll say, okay, so I understand. I can go ahead and be understood. Because I understand, I will be understood. No, 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 no. What you just did, what you embodied, was more of a demonstration of understanding. And the de real desire is to make your counterpart feel understood. The real critical area is until your counterpart feels understood, they're not going to be open to understanding. Mm -hmm. So demonstration of understanding is the objective of making the other person feel understood. And once they have felt understood, now you're in a new conversation. And people shortcut the Covey advice all the time when they say, okay, so I understand. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and pitch. Right. <laughs> it's just that what a mess. Oh. He choked. Yeah. He choked. I think what people should realize when they come in Shark Tank, they should have a plan to fund. They should have, here's my plan and I need $600,000 and here's what's going to happen if you give me $600,000. Here's your returns. If we had that, it would make sense. This was just give me $600,000 and I don't know what happens next. The other thing that strikes me too is that people, when they're, they don't think about what's in it for you first. Yeah, that's a big mistake. I don't know why people do that. It's, the, the smart ones come out and say, look, you give me 600, you'll have 10 million in three years. Right. That, oh yeah? Tell me more. Right, right, right. I, that's a really good point. And it's, I think, even subtle that I'd like to maybe give another example. Like, so I, I have this production company and we're in client meetings all the time. And whether we're creating some original content or developing, writing a commercial, we have the tendency to think that we know best. I have, I have this great idea for you. Trust me. You know, it's almost like, you know, taking these glasses and saying, you know, try these on. These work great for me. And, <laughs> and so they're going to work great for you. That's but a that's, great analogy. But it's not the case, right? No. Nah. Maybe we have the same prescription, but probably not. And so what I've learned with this. Dude, machine. I love that analogy. I'm going to use it a, a 8 billion times. I'll try to always remember to give you attribution because <laughs> I love attribution, but that's a great analogy. Thanks. Well, uh, we've learned the hard way, right? Um, that really getting to the root and asking questions like, okay, so if we did this, 
with this budget, you know, how, how would you see it as a success as a success? We know how we would see it. You know, we know what we would do, but like, would you value it as much as we do? You know, asking those kinds of questions and getting that kind of clarity in the negotiation has made all the difference, you know? Yeah, I bet it has. Yeah, that, that would be a huge thing, huge first step, making the other person feel like it, you're paying attention to them as opposed to the fact that they are often made to feel like they're a cardboard cutout when they're listening to somebody's pitch. And I love this idea, you, you said it earlier, it's really the way to win, to really get what you want is to help the other person get what they want first. And or, or at, le at, least, at least involve them in the process. I mean, they don't even have to get what they want as long as they're fully involved. Yeah. I mean, there's that now they're in. Now they're part of the team. Now, now that now they're good. So many people, if they just feel like they were fully involved with the process, they can live with whatever the outcome is. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that. <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from, and where I'm going. Like I say, man, always said it. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. Ain't nothing changed but the weather. The dangling carrot that hang from the rear view. Uh -huh. Your dreams in the past ain't nowhere near you. Backseat drivers got nothing but two cents. Shotgun riders too biased, they all liars. I should get an A for effort, I'm too tired. But I'm never giving up, that's why I'm kinda in mind. Role model, like it or not, I gotta play it.